morning, everyone. It's 11 o'clock, and it's time for Severe Lack of Talent. I am Tim Poank, and I'm joined with people who think that the seventh inning stretch is a yoga pose. <laughs> Welcome to the show. It wasn't everybody. me. <laughs> okay. That might have been the best one yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Welcome to the show. I'm Devlin Riley. Robbie Perry. Nick Hall. All right, everybody. And hopefully you guys are ready to have some fun. We had a great uh, week in sports-ish for some people, <laughs> some people not well, so Well, it was good. eventful, at least. It was yeah. eventful. Yeah, it was yeah. eventful. Yeah. We got a, we got a lot of interesting things that are, that are going on, and and we got a lot of got a good good goats and good scapes. So uh, I think we'll start off with Devlin. All right. So this week I went. I, I actually kept going back and forth with my goat, um, but I'm gonna go with the Lightning team, but also the coach of the Lightning team, John Cooper. Uh, they did a little article on him just talking about how he shows vulnerability and emotion, um, even though it's a sport that people are just usually, I don't know what guys do, ah, you know, ooh, we won, but he like gets down to the depths <laughs> and gives people the credit and shows emotion all throughout the game. I mean, he had, what was it, five overtimes? And he was refusing food during uh, the breaks because he didn't want to throw off. <laughs> Y'all are so crazy, especially you with like your rituals and like the day of games and what you think is going to throw it off. But yeah, like there was like a salad with some, you know, nice meaty salad that someone wanted to give to him and he wouldn't eat it during like seven hours, I think, of playing. Um, Superstitions are real. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. They're, they're real. I mean, no, I don't believe real. it. I don't believe in anything won't anymore. Cut his hair. Yeah. They, well, that's a, they, he shouldn't cut his hair. They won the game, though, right? Yeah. They did. So they won the game. It works. It's only so. weird if it doesn't work. <laughs> you know, you know, if, you're, if you're shaking the ball in golf, you got to take your money from your right pocket, put it in the left pocket, it all works. Yeah. I like the passion because I felt like, oh, I would have seen that before COVID. So I, I give them the goat because I just thought there was just, they brought, the, it got me a little excited. So. Okay. Well, I mean, and anytime, I, and yeah. anytime you go into five overtimes. I mean, right? Yeah. And yeah. played with that intensity. Yeah. I think it got you guys excited, right? Oh, it was oh, great. Yeah. 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 It was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. All right. It's long. So it last, was, yeah, I know, right? It's just still, yeah. Well, my scape last week, you know, we did talk about the Wizards sucking. Well, my scape this week. <laughs> well, wait, wait, wait. Are you sure that's what you meant? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just, to, I just make it sure because. Good you, for them for somehow wiggling their way in, but they suck. <laughs> 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 Granted, they didn't have their top ten players. Their shoot, yeah, but I heard some high. Their school top players. ten players. They didn't have. They, I mean, they, have, they have two players. I mean, the rest of the teams. <laughs> They just suck. They just suck. Okay. Anyways, the Celtics lost to them this week. <laughs> so they suck, and they're my escape. <laughs> my escape for making this, fun of me for that. Throwing so much shade. <laughs> Such a, so ri a ricochet <laughs> shot. Oh, my God. <laughs> ricochet <laughs> shot. So we just lost all of Boston. Yeah. No, no, no. But so the you guys are my escape. So. Yeah. Wow. I mean, the game was pretty close. Um, <laughs> they did a couple victory laps. Confetti I mean, was they're, coming they're down. Done now. Yeah, it's, that is the most creative escape ever. <laughs> it's yeah. finding a way to still make fun of the Wizards two weeks in a row. Like, she's the Celtics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> really it would be really interesting to go and look at the box score if the Celtics players, if they actually, because they probably already had their... Uh, seed lined up, so how many players yeah, actually true. played? You right. Know, yeah. Like yeah. How yeah, many of their stars? They make excuses. Difficulty, but hey, this show knows how to how to rebound. <laughs> the show like the Wizards. Win. Oh, just got that rebound. Got Let's the rebound go. exactly. Like Dennis Rodman, <laughs> we can rebound. <laughs> so, the, sh the show goes <laughs> on, right? The show, show must goes, go on. Show must go on. <laughs> exactly. You gotta get a like a like that. Well, just to let you guys know, one person that we have to give credit to is behind the camera is Shandell, and yeah. she's the one that actually makes the show possible and uh, she's back there trying to keep everything rocking and rolling so let's get a let's give our go to Shandell. hey everybody we're back take three because <laughs> our technical difficulties so if it sounds a little muffled we're gonna go with our backup backup soundboard so we're in good shape though but uh we're playing like the Wizards yeah, we're no, actually not because they won. This so we're time was the Celtics. Celtics. Yes, we're the Celtics. <laughs> this, this week right. we're playing like the Celtics. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Mr. Perry. All right. Well, I guess my um, my honorary skate would be the the mics so far. Um, so okay, so I'm gonna start with uh, the. I'll go with my my goat. So my goat is actually the Dallas Cowboys. The majority of the Cowboys team are taking it upon themselves, taking the responsibility to create their own bubble next to the practice facility. So it's not like the the Dallas Cowboys are mandating, hey, we're going to do a bubble, we're going to go to this hotel, we're going to do that. That's what the Seattle Seahawks are doing. 
But the Cowboys are actually the a majority of the players, coaches, and staff are staying. And now this is, you know, it's not this huge. You know, it's not like whoa is me. But they are staying in a five star hotel next to the practice facilities, connected. Wow. And uh, that hotel is actually the reason why it makes it so easy is because it has everything they, they need. It's connected. It has the food, the workout, the rehab facilities. So they're actually staying there rehabbing before their practice, which start their official first practice, which starts today. That's interesting. Like, why can't all the teams just do that then? That's feasible well, I, for every team to be able to do that. I will oh. throw this out there. If there's one team that knows they have to take it seriously, it is the Cowboys. If you guys remember just a few months back, the Cowboys are the team that COVID had hit very mm -hmm. first in the NFL. True. Went through the entire team. Um, so they know how how one case can spread so quickly. So they know the severity of it. Yeah. So I mean there's a there's a there's an extra push probably to them more than more than anybody else for sure. Uh, to really get this together and make and take it way They more are serious. aware of how serious right. it can and be. And I think it shows that I think a lot of teams in the NFL, a lot of players in the NFL are taking this pretty seriously. They I mean you know, no one, no one realizes just how fleeting an NFL career is than the NFL players. I mean, For what's sure. the average career span? Is it two and a half years? years? Yeah, I think three years. Yeah, yeah. three years. Yeah. So if, if they go, if they miss one season, you know, next man up. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You sure. might, you might not be have the, the luxury of having like a, a really nice hotel. Like it's a five star hotel. They're, it's literally connected to the practice facility. So build one. You saw what China did yeah. when COVID hit. They built medical facilities. Time out. That hospital built one. fell. Bi okay, whatever. <laughs> On build people. it. Build While it. they were in it. <laughs> it's a they were All right, I did not hear that, <laughs> but awesome. still build it. They could do something. <laughs> That's we would do Let's better with the construction, but it can be done. I'd say bring them all in little winnies, man. They all have like their own little airstreams at the yeah. Cowboys. Yeah, it, it, it. they can paint stars on the side. Of it. I'm gonna challenge Build you. You can hotel. take a you can take a hotel and turn it into one. Renovate one. That's right there. That's that one's gonna be on Google Earth now. <laughs> going to all these practice facilities, get the hit nearby to find out. Oh yeah, yeah. there right is. Right there. There, there is, is a, a closed down Kmart. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Renovate know. it. Uh, Motel <laughs> 6, they can do it right there. Yeah, well, yeah. they'll keep the lights on for them. They'll be fine. Yeah. Besides, they played crappy last year. They don't need a better They don't need it. They don't need it. If it falls, it falls. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so my scapegoat is, uh, so you guys remember before the NBA bubble how everyone was talking about Zion Williamson. He's been working out mm -hmm. at the facility. Yeah. He's been yeah. rehabbing. He's yeah. in the best shape of his life. Well, he showed up fat to the bubble. <laughs> he showed up. He showed up overweight again. He showed up out of shape. And so now he came out and he said, okay, this is finally my time to get my body right. What were you doing for four months? Yeah. You're the well, only I mean, all thing the you could have been... said that he was doing fine. He showed up at this whole, and he no. came out and he said, the... he said, I have, I'm going to take my uh, play. Uh, I'm going to talk to my player development coaches as well. See what I need to do better from their point of view. I need to work on part of my game and get my body where it needs to be. They, then they asked him, okay, what does that mean? He says, we're going to sit down, see what they needed me to do better, and then I can get you a better answer. Jamarcus Russell. I mean, yeah. he, yes. It, and yeah, then he, he's just, he's like, oh, it's so. It's scary, man. The amount of talent he has and the body that he could have. And you know what's funny? The, Tim, you actually just mentioned this. It, like, all the reports didn't say he's doing fine. All these reports said that he is showing up he's like a monster. Facility. Yeah. He's showing up like he is going to just in a different physical form. What happened? You know, what happened? Maybe they were talking I mean, about, like, maybe, like, Eating someone or yeah, like, like a bench press quite or literally something. Literally a monster. Yeah. What did you Shrek? say? What did you just say? Maybe like eating someone. Like, oh, he's a monster. He's gonna eat someone. <laughs> like, <laughs> like Shrek. 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 Yeah. Shrek. Yeah. <laughs> Look, sometimes people like to put more obstacles in their way. Give him a couple. Give let him. Let's see what he does. Oh, well, yeah, he, but, we need but, an but, update. But you gotta remember, he came in like a lion, hurt his knee right away. Yep. Yeah. And then it's been, I mean, it's, he came in overweight. He's, he's, he's teetering on this slope right now. Yeah. He doesn't get his act together quickly. The, a, an example of you saying Jamarcus Russell is actually a great example. The amount of potential that he had that he threw away because, you know what, a, he, in my opinion, he got complacent. Yeah. He got complacent, yeah. thought that he was the best. Well, guess what? You're not the best unless you keep doing what you've been doing to become the best. For sure. And I, now, I don't think Zion, obviously, I don't think he has character issues. I don't no. think uh, Jamarcus Russell, you know, it, it came out that he was addicted to – you know, purple drink, and he had he had some other issues, but he was also lazy in the weight room. Yes. And I think that's where Zion is. 
just lay off a couple cheeseburgers, get back in the weight room. But that being said, I mean, dude, this was your rookie year. Yeah. This was your chance. You know, uh, LeBron James, is, sometimes he drives me crazy, but his Don't talk bad about my man. work ethic is yes. never in question, yeah, you know? No, that's it's that's never in question. 30, 34? 34, 34, 34, 35, somewhere there. I mean, you, you keep in mind, he came out of high school. So, yeah. I know. So but we've had him forever. So. He's never stopped. In a good way. Yeah. No, he, no he's, yeah, he, 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 he has, look, there's very few people whose drive to win right. is more impressive than, than people like LeBron or, or Michael Jordan mm-hmm. or Peyton yeah. Man. And working on his personal craft. And that right. that includes not just, you know, learning, okay, I'm going to work on my jump shot, I'm going to work on this, but it's like, you, basketball is a, High condition sport, oh, you know, especially sure. what they want Zion to right. be. They want Zion to be LeBron James that could play any position. You know, if you if he needs to step in at point guard, he can step in at point guard. But you gotta be in shape, man. Uh, he, they need to bring they need to bring somebody in. You know, some people have that skill that in, in our, that a leader. I could take that. I could take it on myself. Yeah. Skill like LeBron. Yeah. Some people need a leader some, to your point to yeah. step in and, and help them. And I mean, Ovechkin did not become the man, the, the sure. great, the great goal, the great teammate that he was, until they brought in some other people to really lead him. Give him through. a nudge, yeah. Uh, maybe he need they need to look at bringing in somebody to, to help him because you know maybe yeah, it's a tough deal. Mm-hmm. I'm I like Zion, so I'm rooting for him. But I'm just saying, you, you had four months. All they were the reports before the bubble. He was coming in every day, rehabbing, working out. So when you're under a microscope like that, usually you excel and do really yeah. well. Well, well how, how much time passed that where they were where they didn't get to work out? Then before they reported, I mean, maybe you know, uh, maybe he was like really out of shape. Maybe maybe, maybe he just sat there and said, "Did he hit the all you can eat yeah. buffet at Burger True. King?" True. Maybe he actually did get in great That's shape, hard, considering yeah. how I don't know. Yeah. But you see LeBron James showing up for the bubble, and he looks like he's in better shape than he's ever been. But again, he's the, he's the guy who wants to. I mean, yeah. keep in mind, his goal. He's got paid. He has gotten paid. Yeah. There's no. There is no question about the rest of his life. Yeah. He has generational wealth. Right. Okay. Generational. Generational. Sure. He's, yeah. Now he's doing this because. He and loves now it. and so the same thing. You know, but that's the thing. Zion hasn't even gotten paid yet. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean yeah, he's the number one. He was the number he one. He got paid, paid, paid that But money, he didn't but get I mean, paid the big one hundred twenty million dollars. Yeah, you know, so max I mean, contract. You know, maybe he's you know just having that you know young. Oh my God, I got some cash, yeah. and you know that's going on. Well, he was getting cash at Duke. But uh, well, yeah. Yeah, 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 real. I, got, I, got, I got real dollars. I got Duke dollars. All right. What do you got for all us? All right, I got I got two good all ones right, this all week. Right. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> uh, I got two good ones this week. My goat for the week is NFL tight ends. Okay, this is a I I, I think that you know on the heels of gotta your tattoo. Give yeah, tight ends. <laughs> yes, you gotta give some love for the big attractive guys with good hands. I represent. Oh, okay. I represent that group of people. I mean, I am I am tight in. Look at that. Guys. With good hands. With good hands. Okay. Good hands. Okay. Good hands. I, I, I'm, I, okay. I'm, Somebody told themselves. I love uh, good, great hands. Great hands. Great. How's uh, it on this show, then? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the big, my, I'm actually a really big attractive guy, so it didn't work out. Oh, okay. Uh, but no, uh, so, some big news for tight ends, some record-breaking news for tight ends, if you guys have been following. Um, a few weeks ago, Austin Hooper signed as an unrestricted free agent with the uh, Cleveland Browns. When he did that, um, they signed him for $10.6 million. That's a huge contract for a tight end. Um, they're just not a position like a receiver, running back, um, quarterback uh, that usually makes that type of per season money. Um, so go on, going on forward to this past week now, um, Travis Kelsey for the Chiefs, one of the biggest names in football right now, uh, got paid. Um, a little over $14 million a year for the Chiefs, a huge deal for a tight end. And not to be outdone, George Kittle, who in my opinion is the best current uh, tight end, uh, just because Rob Gronkowski took off the season, we'll see what happens, yeah. um, paid over $15 million for the 49ers a year, uh, starting next year now, signed an extension with the 49ers. This is huge news. Hunter Henry actually has a contract coming up at the end of this next year, who's another great tight end. Zach Ertz's contract is coming up in either a year or two, which means that he's going to be in the negotiations for uh, possibly re-signing. So those are two people that are going to benefit more than anybody else because of these tight ends because they are considered elite 
Uh, I don't think Zach Ertz is as good as Zach Ertz thinks Zach Ertz is. Um, I think yeah. that he, I don't know if you guys saw the article that came out where uh, he kind of blasted Madden for being ranked like the fifth or sixth best tight end, which is still incredible. He blasted the top 100 NFL athletes, and he was like 80th, and he was like really, really offended. That yeah, he was yeah, and there. He, like he's, Zach Ertz <laughs> is very good. He's not that good. No. He's not that good. He he actually made it sound like on Madden that he should be one or two. He's not better than Kelsey or, or Kittle right now. Um, there was a time where he was. Uh, that his prime is on he's on the other end but still room to get paid so I think big news uh, for the sport of football for yeah. the position of tight end especially it's a position that doesn't get a ton I would say, of love historically they've been very underpaid yes you know m- maybe because there have always only been like couple good tight ends but it's always been odd to me why they don't get paid those really good tight ends if you look at good left tackles good quarterbacks they get good wide receivers they get paid so why the tight end, especially how the game has evolved, why are the tight ends not getting paid? So like you said, I think it's kind of the finally coming out party, like, okay, this is what we're, the money we're getting type and, of thing. And I'll say it, they deserve wide receiver money. Yeah. They deserve wide receiver money. Oh, the, yeah. The workload that they do and the, the changes that they have in a game. Um, so good good for the position of tight end. Uh, really good news for the people who have our tight ends at the elite up level that um, their contracts are coming up in the next year or two. Because uh, you know that it, every contract that signs sets a, sets a precedent for the next contract to be signed. Um, that's why you always are seeing every year after year Patrick Mahomes setting a new record for the biggest contract. Just wait, give it a year or two. There will be another one that beats so here's, Patrick here's the Mahomes. Question. So where's that money? Who's not getting paid? So when you start to look at where, when you look at the positions that are starting to get more money, where is that money coming from? So there is a salary cap in um, NFL. So I mean, you know, it, it, it just no. It, I think it always depends on the makeup of your team. Uh, I don't know how the Chiefs. With that in mind, with all of that being said, I don't know how the Chiefs are going to pay Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey, and then expect to pay any Tyree well, Kill. Tyree Kill when anyone. his contract comes up, but or yeah, I don't. You know, six other teams, players that contribute to the Super and Bowl. I, I don't know what they do because you know. The Chiefs are in technical salary cap hell. They had a couple hundred dollars left in salary cap after they won the Super Bowl, and somehow they're extending all these. So I don't know what they're doing. The Saints have been in the negative for six, seven years. So maybe the salary cap, it, it's a big deal. Maybe it's not as big of a deal in the NFL as we make it up to be. Maybe they, they just keep on just push the contracts back well, and back like, and I mean, back. It's not like I don't basketball know. where their salary cap is, is – you know, in Jello, yeah. But I think if you look at, there are positions that are becoming almost obsolete. Obs- not obsolete, but you're not seeing the big money. I mean, if you look, you at let them backs, walk. You just draft. You I mean, running backs. Yeah, they don't care. Great, great comment on the um, on the live feed right now. Gordon Duncan says that tight ends are in uh, so demand. Even older tight ends like Jason Witten are able to still get contracts. Yeah. He's right. Yeah. Jason Witten just Rob signed Gronkowski. with the Raiders. Rob Gronkowski. Gronkowski. You can't really consider man. If Gronkowski comes back playing the way that he was playing when he left the sport, uh, sport better watch out. The team, yeah. Buccaneers, that's a, that's, a, that's a game changer for the Buccaneers. But when you look at Rob Gronk, I mean, Rob Gronkowski was so good. He was the best blocking tight end, the best receiving tight end, and he was criminally underpaid. He but was but keep going. Isn't underpaid. that the bottom of the page? I don't think. Way? I mean, but I think, it's just the, the tight ends would take it. But I think that he's, look, when you're, when you're working with a guy like Tom Brady, and you're on a team that wins, you know. If you're not playing for a winning team, you're not gonna. Your name's not gonna get out there. To be, that's. I mean, that's where that problem comes in. Yeah. So I think you would. I would take less money to play with a team. Oh, for that sure. That's gonna win. You know who was the highest paid tight end before he uh, was indefinitely suspended by the league was Aaron Hernandez. Aaron, Aaron Hernandez was the oh, highest paid was, yeah. tight end in the league. I just yep. think every. At, Professional athletes just get paid too much in general. I think it's disgusting. Wow. I know. That's why I just. We'll take capitalism. Well, I I get it. People get paid where the money is generated. I just think it's disgusting. So the WNBA (laughs) does get money. So they don't get paid. Kick you right here, right now. No, it's when you look at when you look at the level of compensation in the in professional sports. The problem that it that it brings on is that. When you're looking at people thinking that that's who they're going to be, right, and they can't achieve that, it is a major letdown. Mm-hmm. So, 
All right, who do you got for us? Oh, we're still on you next Scape Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Scapegoat of the week. This is a good one. I think it's a topic starter because I think that everybody has oh. mentioned it. So I'm just going to start it. I don't even know where you guys fall on this topic, but I'm going to claim the beginning of this discussion. We're going <laughs> to college football with all the craziness that's happened in this past week. Uh, my scape this week to start the discussion is Scott Frost and Nebraska football. Uh, the reason that they are uh, my scape this week is because Nebraska, who, Tim, we talked about this, in my opinion, completely irrelevant. A team that my alma mater, the Tennessee Volunteers, had no problem beating up on in a bowl game. <laughs> Nebraska is irrelevant. I'm going to throw that out there. And this week, as you guys may know, the uh, Pac-12 and the Big Ten have both announced that they will not play fall seasons of football and pushing it to the spring. We can talk about that here yeah. a little bit as well. But with them pushing it back to the spring, Nebraska's up in arms about it. Um, and right before the, the, the season was canceled for them, the fall season, of course, they said that we have no problem leaving the Big Ten in order to go join another conference to play a fall football schedule and threaten to leave. Well, well, let's keep in mind, they threatened to move their football program. Yes. And then the, then the league came back and said, well, if one goes... They all go. Well, I'm going to take it a step further. Well, I, get, I, I not I, but the rest of the sports world. A ton of high-ranking Big Ten alumni and, and people that speak out on sports are now saying, you know what? Call them on their bluff. Kick them out. They don't even help the Big Ten anyways. But why do you think they're doing it? Why Why do I think that they're doing it? Yeah. You know, I don't actually know how to rationalize that. Maybe even, maybe it really is just to keep yourself relevant right no, now. No, what if it's just the desperation to just play? Well, th there's a great article that, that came out that said that the reason why they're doing that is because they can't, they are irrelevant, and they're trying to make themselves relevant again by uh, being supporters, by getting recruits, by letting the players know they For want sure. to play. I mean, you know, look, at some point in time, they I mean, if they say, hey, we're going to go independent or we're not going to play, yeah, we're going to go out and find, no one's picking no them No one's up. picking you up. No one's going to pick you up. But do you not think they're doing it to to get the, the athletes to play, to do it for the fans, to do it for the passion of the game? And to go against your conference and do that? Sure. sure. This is, if they the, want to do this that, is fine. my like, thing. It's a, it's, a good, it's a good point. But you have to be you have to be a Notre Dame to be able to do that. You have to be Y'all were just talking Alabama. crap about Notre Dame last week, so don't say No, no, you, no, they, <laughs> no they're no, not good. They're, no, <laughs> doesn't mean they're not a high demand. I, I Notre, Notre Dame uh, you I have understand. to be Alabama. Yeah. You have to be you have to be a team that brings fans no matter where you are in the right. country and you have to have a, a, a pedigree that says that you're really good. So you're saying they have nothing to lose then? So Getting my, kicked out of the my, Big Ten? No, they have everything to no, lose. No, they, they, they only have stuff to lose. My right. goats, one of my goats before the Cowboys was going to be Nebraska because the reason why is it came from the football coach and the football team and the last thing that, you know, when when – when I want my coach and what, what I want for my team is I want them to be in the business of playing football. Mm -hmm. And that's what he wants to do. He wants to play football. So the Big Ten, out of his control, they want to play. They said, okay, we're not playing football. So for me, what I would do, especially when I'm looking at my guys, I would say, we're going to play football. Now Nebraska sucks. Nebra you know, Big Ten saved Nebraska a couple years ago when they were you know, going out of the Big 12. I get there that there's that issue. But when it comes down, you're, you're a football team, you're a football coach, you want to play football. Politics be damned. I'm sorry. Now, obviously, the you know Nebraska president came out, sent an email to you know the season ticket holders, and said, "Oh, you know, we are committed to Big Ten, but it's all the money that they're getting." So obviously, money pays. They oh, yeah. completely stepped down for you know everything. But I want that for my coach. I want if the if the Powers that be cancel the season. I want to be like, hey, we want to play. We we are ready. We want to play. We exactly. want to do he, everything. That was what he so did. he was going to be my goat, even though it's Nebraska. Like you said, they're not going to win. But I want that we're going to do whatever we want to do to play. Now, of course, the president came out and said that's not happening. Right. Shut him down. But for, I need that for my coach. I don't need, hey, we're going to play this political game with Big Ten, with f football. I want to say, hey, we want to play. We want to play. And then obviously their president didn't call his bluff. He said, 
no, forget it. We're not doing this type thing. Well, I, I think he. I think. I mean, again, I think it may have started out as a, "Hey, we want to play. We're just going to go. We, we, we won't." I'm not play denying the they wanted attention. Yeah, oh, I'm yeah. not denying that, but I think the root of it was the passion. I mean, it, it can be, but you got to be careful. Sometimes I your know. passion. Yeah, goes. yeah. Well, you're also men, and y'all don't think I, about your consequences. I don't think. <laughs> oh yeah, we do. I don't Afterwards. think that. Uh, <laughs> I don't think oh. that Nebraska <laughs> Nebraska is not my skate for wanting to play football. Right. Every other team out there has already said when it's time to play, we are ready. Right. Um, they're all they are all saying that, and that's what. But as your football coach, would you be happy with your coach if you're threatening to do something to take you out of the Big Ten, knowing damn well that, no, knowing very well <laughs> that there is no chance you get into another major conference. If, if I was I a just senior, a big 12, if, if, you I, had, consider I, a if I had if I had my ducks in a row, where right. I knew okay, we've got ten other teams or five other teams or six of the teams that are decent enough that are willing to put together a schedule where my players could play, where we could get some sort of right. TV contract, where they could showcase their talents so they could get you know move on to the NFL if they needed to. If you're looking at for your whole players, if you had if you had that plan. Maybe. He hasn't had time to move. Yeah. But especially not back down yeah. from that. But right. not back down from that when the conference tells you if you leave this year, you're leaving. Period. Well, you then you have to and back I, down. Your your bluff is but gone. He yeah. did, but he didn't. Yeah, he, and I, he didn't. I, and that's that is where that's risking not just your current players. That's risking your next your next generation well, of Nebraska well, football risks, players. It, it, it's not just football. It risks your entire athletic department. Athletic. Yeah. I have a question. Don't make fun of me. What are the seniors doing for this season that are they can this count as a red shirt for them? Oh, they haven't really announced that quite yet. The okay, Big good. Ten mm -hmm. is grossly incompetent. Um, I think the the Big Ten has no idea what they're doing. Yeah. No idea what they're doing. And um so no, there hasn't been anything released okay. about it okay. whatsoever. But they can they can they all practice twenty hours a week no, and do drill work. Now that's not point, gonna be that's to not point, gonna be if the season doesn't start. Yeah. It's not a season. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. so, so, so if the season doesn't happen, it's just it's no um, different than if you're if you're if you, when you're playing college sports. Yeah. If you take off a year for whatever reason, it doesn't count. Well, then do they take off academically as well? What if they graduate? Can they still play? Is, you can still yeah. play. That yeah. is not a, an entirely true. That is not entirely true. Uh -huh. You have five years to complete four years of eligibility without a waiver. Well, yeah, but you you got so, an extra year. However, with that with that in mind, you know. It's not the conference's decision if these people can come back. It's not the conference. It's not the no. big. It's not. It's the NCAA's decision. They have new recruits coming Could I in too. Yes. Play? No, your clock. Your clock started. Hey, you call <laughs> me old. <laughs> Don't do that. Well, uh, no, it, it, it is the NCAA's call and their mm -hmm. policies that that would actually dictate if, if players can come back or get a free year of eligibility. So it's not actually the conferences that even get to decide no, that. As long as the NCAA, NCAA, as that NCAA be, still exists. Yeah. Well, they, yeah. they will. They'll put a policy in place for it, I'm sure. But it was just I would think so. I, I mean, they did last year. So. They, yeah, did, right. they did last year. They did so far for all of the spring sports that were canceled. Basketball, they, get, they get all baseball. returned. They get a free year of eligibility. Okay. So. All right, gang. So it gets off to me. <laughs> and I'm going to go. We've talked about the Astros a lot and we've talked about how you know there was no punishment for the sign stealing that went on and you know that I've, I've been out there saying you're not cheating you're not trying all the time Zach Greinke decides that he's had enough and his game is on and he decides to tell everybody every pitch he's throwing <laughs> before he throws it good for him and still wins the game. Yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 I, that's there hot. is I mean he there's a great video of him going like this <laughs> just before he pitches, that's yeah. so com like the confidence, and, man. Oh, the, and then mm. the, the players, the players walk away from him after watching Embarrass. that was just like, you jerk. Yeah, and that I'm being very politically correct on that. I mean, yeah. it was quiet. He could hear. They could hear. They said you could hear him talking back and forth to the catcher about what <laughs> he wants to do. <laughs> so I mean, there was no question what he was throwing. You know, and they couldn't hit him. Put that in mind. Pitching ninja, Zach Greinke. Is up there with your Verlanders and your Scherzers and your Strasburgs that when he is on, it doesn't matter if you know what's coming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't I mean, matter. Oh, yeah. He's that good. Yeah. He's that good. I mean, but yeah. think about that. If you, I mean, think about how once you know that after like three innings and you're not getting anywhere, 
That's even more in your head. Oh, <laughs> for sure. The, you're now now that now you own that team. Oh, I mean, life. that's the part that's amazing. You are now mentally owned. <laughs> He's it, got you. Yeah, he you, owns yeah. you. Yeah. That, that is nine other players who are almost got in the game who are just sitting there going, "Oh God." Yeah. I mean, it's the mental game becomes it, it, like a yeah. huge mental battle for oh, sure. Oh gosh, when you're in that box. I mean, we talk about a box in sports sometimes where you kind of corner yourself in and you get, and it's you in your head, man. There's, you have, it's like, this game's done. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not going to get out. Yeah. So I, I think that's, <laughs> you know, pitching performance, it was great. But it, coming from the Astros, uh, <laughs> coming, coming from Astros, the Astros, yeah. And calling signs like, mm. here, you don't have to steal them. I'll give them to you yeah. for free. Yeah. I mean, and imagine what his coaches, you know, the managers are going, you better win. Does he have <laughs> yeah. that long, wavy hair right now? Or is it cut? Well, he, he cut. It used yeah, to be yeah, long. Yeah. It used to be long. Yeah, he had a long. great flow for Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. All right, so, so we're going to go from someone who, who who showed some greatness to <laughs> Seahawks rookie uh, <laughs> cornerback. I don't want to mess his name up. It looks like it's Kima Silverland. Was caught on video oh. sneaking a woman into the team's overnight practice facilities where they were sleeping and violating their bubble and he wondered why he got caught and he the best thing <laughs> I, this is my favorite he part he, he got was, on video but he got caught he was trying he tried to dress her up as a as Seahawks a player, player. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah that was that's probably At my favorite part of the story at least put that much effort yeah. into it yeah, but, so how did he get caught it was on video. Like, but, but, but she she probably looked like a man, right? No, I think I think they stopped basically like they they were on top of it. I think they saw him like for security camera, him walking in. They were like, "Somebody go get your man's," you know, like <laughs> so that yeah. They, they, and, and you know that if there was another player out there who's sitting there going, "Well, you know what? There's like there's twelve quarterbacks on the list." No, does she get in trouble? Does she get fined? No, no. She's, no. This, she just gets kicked so, out. Yeah, this is this is America. I don't. But Jeff Fisher, Hard Knocks, when he was with uh, when they moved to LA, they went away, you know, for a training camp, and their num his number one rule was um, no no women. So Jeff Fisher. You know, same thing, undrafted cornerback, a, a guy tried to sneak a woman into the dorm room, and Jeff Fisher cut him. He, this is not even, this is way before COVID. So, like, Pete Carroll probably said no women, you know, obvi and no guests or anything. So, I mean, he probably would have been, he probably would have been cut regardless. But you're a rookie. An undrafted. I mean, an undra I mean, I mean yeah. so this is now... This is your chance. We just talked about these college players coming up. You know, what happens to them? Know. You know, you, you 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 landed on a team. You've got a chance to make it. We talked a couple weeks ago about the guy that crashed his car. Uh, how yeah. do you? How do you? And you know they've they've gone through those classes. The NFL gives them those classes and says, "Hey, don't do anything stupid. Here's a listing of things that have been stupid that have been done by players <laughs> before. Don't do this." And do you sit there and go. Yeah, it's worth it. Yeah, I mean, no, it's and, wild. You know, I, I just, I don't, I don't know how you, I don't know how you recover from that. You don't. You don't. So, you get on TikTok. I'm sure we'll see an account. Yeah. He'll be doing if some TikTok fun stuff. TikTok is still around. I mean, no, it yeah, will be. Don't worry. Know. They just, they just sponsored um, something in one of the stadiums in New York. What, well, like they, as a, a several billion dollar deal. TikTok they gotta get, they gotta get bought by somebody money, in the United States. Well, so. money speaks though. They're not going anywhere. So my, I have an honorable mention, and I think you guys can appreciate my honorable mention. I don't think there's anything worse than being on a national television, <laughs> a national television as a baseball groundskeeper. You know, you, you get, you know, you, you get there. They come to the stadium. They see this beautifully, immaculately done field, and and things are great. You know, the way that you cut the lines into it. Oh my God, look! There's a heart in the middle of the outfield, mm -hmm. or these neat designs you can do with a lawnmower, and, and you know, you get the you get the props for that. But nothing overcomes the fact when you can't get the tarp on the field. And so I'm going to throw an honorable mention out to the Nationals grounds crew who absolutely tried <laughs> to get the tarp on the field. And I don't know how it got tangled up or not, but Aww. I think when you're in the middle of a rainstorm, Aww. everyone watching you and even the announcers are going, ooh, that's <laughs> not good. <laughs> <laughs> it, Boy, everyone nice. who watched that, who works in baseball, immediately had a like 
They're in all there. flashbacks. Yeah, yeah flashbacks. I was saying, did you guys have PTSD there. from that? I've had, I've, I've, I've had, I've, July I've 4th, had, a yeah. couple years ago. I've had, to twitch. I've had two, I've had two terrible experiences. Aww. So, so what happens, I mean, you roll it up a certain way, there's got to be like a math. It was a bad roll up that, that caused we that. We had, we had one of the ropes that are normally rolled up just, must have got sideways, and when you kept rolling, it just it locked it everything kept, it did the place. same thing. It like you couldn't untangle it, so it, if you went further, it made it worse, type of thing. Look, it it it, hap- it, it sucks, but it happens. I mean, it sucks, yeah, I mean, it so what, what's the worst tarp disaster you've ever had? Ooh. Oh, Fourth of July, full stadium, complete sellout, um, like fourth inning. Yeah, had to put the tarp on, tie game. We knew it was going to be a short storm, so we knew that, you know, get the tarp on, maybe an hour delay, the crowd will still hang out. It's 4th of July, we got fireworks coming up. Well, we got like <laughs> two, <laughs> two rolls out before we realized the tarp wasn't letting go of the roll. It was just rolling. Yeah. It was just rolling. And it was just tangling. It, it wasn't tangling. as easy as, oh, hey, go untie something. It was, yeah. it so was did you get, what, you get some, zip, some hefty trash bags and start putting them on places? Uh, it, the, no, the game, the game, it was, it was, it was, un- it was mud. manageable. It was yeah. mud, yeah. Mm-hmm. Call the game. <laughs> yeah, call, oh, no. had, to, had to call the game. Uh, but hey, we still shot fireworks. We still shot fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there was fireworks at the end. And everyone, everyone was like cheering us yeah. on. Yeah, it was Aww, a disaster. At least <laughs> everyone was cheering us on. It was a disaster. It was a disaster. <laughs> you never want to be recognized, whether they're clapping or booing, as a ground crew. Yeah. yeah so just FYI, you yeah. never want to be recognized. So when he says people were cheering for us, they were out of sympathy. They were never laughing at you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, because it was pouring on us were at that time. Were you both part of that? Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And it was it was one of those things that... Now you're wet. So yeah. I mean, yeah. so Everybody's mad at each other because we can't figure it out. <laughs> and it <laughs> was, whose fault is yeah, it? Yeah, whose fault is it? I, I got to blame somebody. But there is, ma- there is, there is a, a fold, like a, a way that you're supposed to oh, fold yeah. this tarp up, Oh, of right? course. Of course. Yeah. And I, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Every, every team has their own system. So if you bring in a new tarp guy, it can throw the whole thing off. I mean, no, it really shouldn't. <laughs> no, 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 it, shouldn't. it really shouldn't. It really no. shouldn't. Even bringing in a new tarp guy, we, we, he would just tell you. Okay, we could all go down there right now, and it's, as long as you, hey, you know, I mean, you just follow what everyone else yeah. is doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it really, even a new tarp guy, but it really, yeah. it really shouldn't affect us. I think this is how we should roll with these. Yeah. We're roll it in triangles. But uh, as much as it sucks, it does happen. It just, you know. It's not on national television at the minor league level. Yeah. <laughs> so they get the spotlight on them. We'll get you on the wall of shame. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty cool. So we were going to do Jeopardy. We don't have enough time for Jeopardy today, which is okay. But we do have a few other interesting topics that went that, that happened. Uh, we talked about the Capitals beforehand, about you know, they obviously are going to have to come from behind like they did last year. But I want to go to soccer. Cool. I want to talk about Dallas versus Nashville. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I think it's interesting from a 30,000 foot view. First game, first field game that had fans. Not NASCAR, yep. where you can't hear anything. And the team, they played the national anthem. The teams took a knee. A few people had their hands over their hearts. And the, they're in Texas, and the players didn't get the response they were looking for. Yeah, so uh, they were all like, I read some of the comments and they were like, it's very disappointing. It's, uh, I mean, I'm sorry. Like, what did you, th- what did you think that was going to happen? Everyone was going to cheer you on. Yeah, for you, like you're in, you know, you're in Dallas, you're in Texas. Like, what do you think is going to happen? I- I'm sorry, but. I mean, if you protest, that that's that's fine. That is fine. That's your deal. That's but, your deal. But, but really, is other people are the gonna majority say. of sport fans, not necessarily soccer fans or basketball fans, but it, especially in football. I mean, it, well, if you're in Texas, you know. But I mean, I was in uh, at a Buffalo Bills game. And it was the day after um, Donald Trump said all those SOBs better stand for the anthem. So I was like, oh boy, here we go. So all the players knelt um, on that Sunday. And I was in Buffalo, New York, which is not a conservative, politically conservative right. town. I mean, it's very, very left. The place erupted in booze. Like, what do you think is going to happen? Like, what do you do? Uh, so clap but it just, you? But it like, goes to the point that they, you know, we're getting past the fact of the sport of the sport, right? And that you know, and I think they're going to, you know, 
maybe that's not the best way to. But do you think people are hypersensitive because we're finally getting to play sports? Kind of like you just play the play the game. But I think I think we've got to the point where I, I think people are saying to your what you said play yeah. the game, but I think it's just not an, you know they're learning. It's not an appropriate way right. to get their point across right. because. It adds another layer of division that goes into it. But then it becomes it becomes a cycle. So my whole thing is I don't give a rip, whatever. I wouldn't do that. But whatever. If you want to do yeah. it, but like if I become vocal and I get angry and this, then they're gonna be more likely to do it. And then now we're talking about it. And then like that's the whole thing. I don't wanna do it, fine, don't care. But you I you're not this big American hero for right. doing it. Yeah, so not, you know what I'm I saying? I think it's what they expect. Yeah, I, I think, think it's what people expect think, by, by, by standing up, or, or, or the opposite of standing up, but and you they, have a freedom. There's <laughs> everybody else has the same freedom to, to react however they want to your yeah. freedom. And yeah. that's the unintended. That's the unintended consequence that I noticed as you listen to comments after the game. You know, players saying that they're pissed because they got booed. You know, this is our own home crowd. Right. Now you're looking at, I mean, it's the sport of soccer. So, you know, we're not talking people who are 100% known in the community like some other sports players are. But they do do good work in the community. Now how does that affect that goes right. on? You know, now are you going to get booed just because? It's just, it's creating this, this whole second layer to a game that, you know, is that really relevant to what, you're there. You know, you said they're paid a lot of money. I've now is that in their problem. head? Yeah. And what's going on? And, you know, I, I just, you know, they. It's. I think they need to look at it. I mean, what is the best way for us really to be social That's warriors? kind of my whole, you can do whatever you want. I, I literally cannot stress enough. I do not care. Neil, whatever. This is America. Do whatever you want. But my whole thing is, is that if you, your goal should be trying to incite change and try to change in people's hearts. Clearly, you're doing the opposite. Yeah, and that's so. It. If you truly, truly want to make a stand and make a change and be like, "Oh, I need to reflect," right. shouldn't it the opposite of like trying to really piss people off and 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 do something that clearly means a lot to a large amount of people? Now, you can say, "Well, no, you know, the anthem is not about the military." You can say whatever you want, but clearly, it's inciting something. Mm -hmm. A, a reaction and not a positive reaction for the change that you want. So if you really want to make change and really, it's not really just protesting the original protest. That's the thing. It, it, it's an, I have completely think that everyone's lost sight of what Colin Kaepernick was doing. He was protesting police brutality. And then people started getting mad at Colin Kaepernick. So more players started kneeling because they were mad at the people that were mad yeah, at yeah. Colin Kaepernick. And then, then Trump got mad at people that were kneeling yeah. and protesting. Yeah. Yeah, and then everyone was maybe, maybe kneeling. Maybe one day we need to do the whole timeline of just... It's a protest of a protest of a protest of a protest of the original protest. Yeah, uh, you're right. And we're, we're losing sight. We're not making change. We're just ticking people off. We've so we created a divide. We've created yeah. a divide. Yeah. And, and created a sub-issue that, you know... It was a good game, too. Yeah, it it should have been, been a celebration. First time fans were back in and MLS. The, 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 the pre-game talk of the fans that were showing up and how they were there with the masks on and, and you know, parents with their kids all excited about this. And then that's the other thing. I don't want to have to explain to my young son or my young daughter why they're booing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the, you know that that you know, that's when you bring up the the chart and you're like, so, okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, so yeah, I, it just I I, th I think the pl I think players in a lot of the sports that are in the bubble that haven't seen what how fans' reactions are going to go yeah. need to realize that it's not just limited to NASCAR about you know oh well let's just a bunch of the rednecks that's how they're going to be now you're in the sport of soccer you know where it's going to go realize that we have to find that middle ground yeah. and i think that's the, the 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 hard part speaking of people who can't find middle ground dan snyder made his way back into the news again okay i haven't heard more. this so it seems that the pressure is now mounting to uh for from the minority owners of the team and minority being the people with less stock than he me yep. uh, that they want him to sell the team and the reporting was talking that the one of the issues is that he is a drag now on the selling price. So he's mm. dropping the selling price lower, lower, and lower, and lower. But here was the interesting part. Not, so he's trying to sell it? 
uh, oh, the, the, they the, are the, uh, the, the yeah. other owners. So you know when you think about that, okay, if he were to sell it, you know who would be who would be a, a legitimate player? Who would who would be someone they right. would consider selling it to? You know names would come up would be Ted Leonsis and, and Monumental Sports, yep. who own the Capitals and the Wizards mm -hmm. and all the other things, or the Lerner family, and you go, okay, well the, all the maybe they can come together. The name that was floated recently, Mark. Cuban. That's Ooh, okay. That's, that, nice. was my, that was my dark horse the whole time. He wants an NFL team. Yeah. He so wants an NFL Mark team and Cuban. he has wanted one. So if anyone has the money, Interesting. has the ability to do it. And also, too, I'm going to throw one out. Has the ability to come in and change a culture. Oh, for sure. Has the ability. No, and I was going to say. That's the biggest. Cha can change the culture. Has a way that it cares about the fan experience. But I was going to say, that's the big thing. I mean, thoroughly cares and is passionate about the team. Yeah. Has it meddled with his team? You know, the meddling that he does is... is more Chest bumps on the sideline. Yeah. You, I, I love seeing him get yeah. so excited with his team on the sideline. He's not making decisions, but he's not. he'd be the first to high five after the a big play. The big thing about Mark Cuban is that he doesn't meddle in the basketball fair. So I think he let's right. say Mark Cuban stepped in, he would keep Rivera, but he really is hands-on on the business side. Yeah. Correct. And he cares about his employees. He said that he is going to pay everyone. He's not going to let anyone go. He would pay. Well, now, he does listen, look like a happy person. Like, yeah, so he, he cares about the employees. Employees. He actually even came out and said that he was going to pay all the game day employees. I don't. I didn't think that was necessary, but I don't think these billion dollar owners at should have let go. You know their front office staff. What do you I think mean, his net worth is? We'll take free guesses. Net worth two point five billion. Oh, more than that, fifteen billion. I think it's six point. It's like six it's five. It's four point three. Okay. <sighs> Dang. Well, I, I will. I will also say That's, this. I, I agree, Robbie. He. If he does come in, he's not going to mess with the football affairs, right. which is what people really care for. But if there's one side, and honestly, Rivera right now, uh, no, I'm sorry, not Rivera, Daniel Snyder right now, he needs to stop having his hand in the football side, and he needs somebody to step in on yeah. the business side. It's literally what Mark Cuban would come in and do. He's going to let the football run itself. He's going to hire a GM. Um, he's going to, you know, maybe even keep Rivera, which I think I still think it's a great oh, yeah, hire. Yeah, yeah. Regardless, I mean, that, that was a, it was a great hire by Snyder. Uh, keep keynote. You know, let the football team build itself up, get better. But then also too, he is going to step in on the uh, uh, on the business side of things, which I think the the Washington football team desperately, desperately. needs. Their fans need that, and he's going to come in and he's going to be he's going to make a lot of changes. Well, do you think it's uh, going to happen? Uh, I mean, it'll be cool. I, I don't think. Cool. I don't. I think that Dan Snyder is going to be Dan Snyder is going to be like either like a like a Richard Nixon. Where the entire NFL team, the NFL needs to come in and go, hey, <laughs> Panthers. Just to let you know, yeah. we have absolutely no intention of supporting you in the in the in right. what's going on. So like when Nixon was told by the whole Congress he's out, they're gonna have to go in and say, you're an embarrassment to the league. Nobody cares. That's what they did with the former. I don't even yeah, remember his name. Good thing I don't. Panthers. Well, former yeah. Panthers owner Richardson. Yeah. But his the the, fun, the different thing for him is. He, the selling of the Panthers team started the large price for all sports franchises. Mm -hmm. Oh, the ridiculous number that he got. That's the thing. To buy the Redskins, it would be five billion dollars. Well, the Panthers was like two point five. The I mean, Panthers. It, who knows? What's the value that Dan Snyder has dropped it down to his product? He has the ability to get out now, and he, again, he has enough money where it doesn't matter. But it's his stubbornness. Oh, yeah. His pride, yeah. and that's well, going to get I, in the way. If somebody like a Cuban came in, though, that would he be would a game changer. Aggressively Gosh. make changes to the point where some it's people getting me excited. Some people would even call him a shark. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow! Look at you! Crushed wow! It. Crushed, yeah, so crushed, it. crushed it! Crushed well, it! Crushed it! Crushed it! I have been uh, 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 a maverick, a maverick of the sport. Maverick shark. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think you're saying it would get people excited. <laughs> mm -hmm. I guarantee you, this place would sell out again. Yeah. Oh yeah. Without oh, even yeah. worrying about who the, uh, without even worrying about an acquisition, a player mm -hmm. acquisition. The helmets are cute. Uh, well, you I know like, you don't like them. I, I, I think like the, me I, and Robbie agree with the helmets are. I, mean, cute. I like the football team. I, like I like think it's the. the I think it's the. I don't, I don't like, like the name. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the only reason why they did that is because they didn't want to have a helmet that was worse looking than the Browns. So <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, you know.
But I, I, I would I think that that Mark Cuban would make. With credit to Rivera, he uh, their running back that had all the talent in the world. He had injury issues. He got arrested last weekend uh, for domestic abuse, and he cut him same day. Oh yeah. yeah. Wow. So so. I tell you what, though, they have a stiff quarter uh, running back room though right now. Oh yeah. They have a stiff yeah. running back room. The, the and Mexican Alex team. Smith is was cleared yep. to play. Yeah. So which is amazing. Big things happening. All right, we were going to play Jeopardy. We're not going to play Jeopardy, but we are going to do one little bit of Jeopardy. We I wanted to do a section called. Virginia mascots. Oh, okay. okay. So I want to see how you guys do with this. So um, oh I'm going to go ahead and we'll start off with, are you ready? I'm ready. Mary Washington. It's like a person, isn't it? That She is a person, but the mascot for the school. No, <laughs> I'd say the mascot. Mary Washington. Is that University Mary Washington? Washington? Here's Mary Washington. Um, it, it's a bear. It is not a bear. <laughs> Colonels? It's not a colonel. <laughs> and you're from this town. So. I, oh, 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 I've seen my parents. Graduated. Your parents? <laughs> I don't want to say that. <laughs> I'll give. Oh, 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 oh! I, I want to say something because it's, it's the, it's a bird. It's a bird. Oh, nice. I want to say, but I don't. Yes, it's an eagle. It is. It is it's an, an eagle. eagle. Yeah. Yes, there yeah, you go. Right, right when you said bird, I was like, it's an eagle. Because right. right. yeah, oh, yeah. it has because yeah. we have bald eagles all the time. JMU. James oh, oh, Madison. Um, I'll, I'll help you the hint. It's a bulldog. No. It is a it is a dog, but their name is the Pip. Oh, I know. It's royalty. French bulldog. <laughs> the Dukes. Oh. oh. Yes. So their their mascot's a like a like a, a dog. Huh. Yeah. Ferrum. Oh. I don't even know who that is. Yeah, I haven't Ferrum. heard. That's where Durante was gonna go. Is it a dog? I'm gonna leave that one up for you to look since that's Is it the Bulldogs? No, it's not the Bulldogs. I had it. Shepherds. Shepherds. No. no. Man, I thought I got that There's one. No, <laughs> there's no um, school that has a shepherd, and I'm surprised. Those are, right? Is there a school that has a shepherd as their mascot? Like a German shepherd? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure someone has a shepherd. Yeah. I have no clue. I have no idea. Uh, it's not coming up. Oh, they're uh, the Panthers. The Panthers. They're the, the Fair and Panthers. It's, it's, a, mm. it's a small D3 school. Yeah. UVA. Oh, they're the uh, Cavaliers. Cavaliers. Yeah. Okay. VCU. Virginia Commonwealth University. Yeah, that's down in Richmond, but it's... Uh, I knew it was in Richmond. Um, uh, no. Can you give us the first letter? R. The Raiders. A. R M. Rams. Rams. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, Rams. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, yeah, congratulations, everybody. We all that one, yeah, that was, that was, that was pretty good. Um, y'all are from, like, Tennessee, so this is... Uh, but I, thought you, I thought you might do fairly well on that one. Well, so. I, I knew them. I'm just... I knew some of them. I did. I, oh, yeah, it was, yeah, the Hokies, like, the... Like, I, well, the, the fact, big ones I knew. Yeah. Yeah, the big uh, ones I knew. Mary well, well, Washington. Mary Washington. We, we should have no, like, all known Mary Washington. I mean, no, but <laughs> I've seen their logo and been up there. Yeah, both my parents Right when you said bird, I was like, okay. Yeah. I, it clicked. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's more? There's uh, uh -huh. last one to see if you guys get it right. The uh, Fredericksburg Nationals. Nationals. Uh, Fred Na Fredericksburg Na Nationals. Oh, oh, it's, it's, it's your, it's oh, your weird guts. thing. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, there's only tattooed on it. Yeah. Show, show <laughs> us the tattoo. <laughs> I, I, Zoom in, Shondell. The, 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 funny, the funny part is the amount of time it took him to Fredericksburg. You, you said Fredericksburg. What college is that? <laughs> well, it wasn't actually mascots that we were doing. It's actually yeah. the moniker. So yeah, the true. moniker of the Fred Nats is the Nationals. That's true, but, but I, we threw that out there. Uh, good show, gang. Sorry yeah. about the technical difficulties. Yeah, we, difficulties are overcoming the elements. Way to go, Shondell, and keeping us live. Uh, everyone, it's been a great show. We will see you next week here on the bench. See y'all Friday. Friday. Today's Friday. Today's Friday. So what happened?